we're, we're hopeful. I mean, we never in a million years would imagine that uh, this would have happened. Um, and then things went dark. This is a flash flood emergency for Burke, McDonald, Alexander, and Caldwell counties. This is a particularly dangerous situation. Seek higher ground now. This is a particularly dangerous situation. We are stranded here. Life-threatening flash flooding. We're stranded here. Nobody else is home. We're the last ones on the street. Hazard. Life-threatening flash flooding. Catastrophic. Oh my god! And an additional swath of heavy rainfall will result in imminent catastrophic flooding in the Warren area. We just recovered over 100 bodies in one community and uh, began to weep. I wept with him. How do you deal with that without not getting emotional? Uh, the next night he was in the same spot. It was They were feeding them again. We were bringing another load up and I said, how was your day today? It wasn't as bad. They only found a little over 30 bodies in a different community. I go to Newland. I talked to another pastor. And they gave me a story of some of their folks that had gone in and rescued, tried to rescue people as the storm waters were coming in. There was one gentleman there, and I didn't know at the time, but I ended up, after I heard the story, I knew the man. He had stepped out on the front porch to watch the rising waters to make sure that him and his wife had plenty of time to come, or to get out. He heard a snap behind him, the mountain turned loose, and when the mountain turned loose, it came through the back wall of the house shoved that wall through the next wall, the middle wall, screamed at his wife, she jumped out the window and ran. And before he could get out, it came through the front wall, collapsed the house together, pushed him out into the mud into a culvert. It took several hours to realize he, the mud had packed him in. And uh, they took him several hours to find him. Then a man was able to, tr to crawl in from the right side to him held his hand, wiped his face, wiped the mud off, began to pray with him. This was actually on Fox News. It, uh, with all the rescue workers, the neighbors, all the community people, they got him out, it took several hours. Got him to the hospital, but it was so much trauma that he ended up passing. And, and I found out after that that it was somebody that I've known for years and years. And story after story, I've got a pastor friend up there, so their churches were going out into the, before the first responders ever got there seeing whole families swept away, mamas and daddies and children screaming and crying. And uh, as of yesterday, they've yet to find their bodies. So it's a, it's a tragic situation, but in the tragedy, there's always stories of victory. Prayer and faith is getting you through this, and it is such an important thing to lean on in this time. What is it you want people watching to know and to understand as we continue to bring coverage out of Asheville, out of North Carolina, out of these communities that have been so deeply and forever impacted? I want them to remember that there is joy beyond the pain. It's God. He said, be still, I am in control and you will pass on. This is a backfire for the devil because he tried to take me out. And here I am sharing the word that <laughs> my seven-year-old is a hero and my parents live on in God's glory. I was in the water for five hours. I was in the water for a very long time down the river. You know, I'm so proud of my son because in his last moments, he wasn't screaming for me. He was screaming, Jesus, Jesus, save me. Jesus, I hear you. Jesus, I'm calling upon you. He's my hero because he reached for something past flesh, past, past human, past anything that even grown adults, I think, would reach for. My son called out to the one God Almighty.
Roberts from Morganton. Tell us what you're seeing. Tell us what you're experiencing. They, there is 1,200 confirmed dead in Asheville. They took another 1,000 body bags up yesterday. There's uh, 600 to 1,000 corpses floating in Lake Lure or hanging in trees around the lake. FEMA came in, seized everything from the volunteers, hundreds of volunteers, all the donations, all the money, everything, and told the people that was doing all the volunteering that they had to be uh, certified as a rescuer or be arrested. Well, Cletus McFarland, he's a big YouTuber too. Okay. Uh, he owns a Freedom Factory racetrack in Florida. Okay. And uh, he just recently bought this real pretty blue helicopter. And he was up and around the Lake Lure area a few days ago uh, and a whole bunch of other choppers. And they told uh, everybody that if you weren't military, you weren't FEMA, uh, that you were not allowed to do any type of rescues or uh, uh, supply drops to anyone. After he had done, done like 28 drops. Hmm. If, if any of you guys down here doing this relief stuff, we need some help in Morganton too. Yeah, don't overlook the little places just because you're worried about Asheville and the Biltmore House. A remarkable operation underway. Uh, it's just been immense. And we are here, yes, at the Hickory Regional Airport. And really, this is such an incredible feat to watch, really because we're watching community members seeing a crisis, seeing a need out there, and they are running towards it. Help is on the way. We just kind of organized a private helicopter army to go in and survey the damage and get extract people and take supplies in and uh, just create landing zones for everybody to have supply routes in and out. All right, let's say a prayer and knock this out, boys. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we absolutely thank you for another day that you've given us the weather to be able to go collect people and drop off supplies. We thank you for the ability that you've given us to be pilots to go do this mission, these missions. Lord, we just ask that you that you give us safety, that you give us clarity, that you give us direction to get to the right places. Lord, we just thank you again for the day you've given us. We thank you for the lives that you're letting us save. We ask that you be with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Matt McSwain is a pilot from Mount Holly and says he received a call from Operation Airdrop an organization now working to shore up relief and rescue efforts for folks trapped in North Carolina's high country. We've had 37 helicopters today, uh, volunteers. We've had people from Texas to Maine all the way uh, across the East Coast just show up and like, how do we help? Mick Swain took us back to the war room where we were allowed to take photos but not share any audio from inside. There's a station where they gather calls for help, often from social media posts then triage the severity of the need and what supplies should go on the flight, and then attempt to find that person in distress. One of the biggest hurdles, McSwain says, is not having spots to land. When we go to those GPS coordinates, we may not be able to land there. It might be a mile, two miles on one side or the other just because we can't get to that distress call. Tuesday, he says they plan to help with another major concern, shuttling in communication devices for first responders. There's actual whole communities that are completely cut off from the grid. We tried to establish communications with the local sheriff's department, the fire department. There is no communications. 
And so, yeah, they were talking about bringing in these Starlink uh, communication devices, which they say they received a donation of a bunch of these. So this will really help. Um, as far as what the community can do to help, we will let you know Operation Airdrop has started to raise some money for fuel costs. We're told just here with this operation, $60,000 a day being spent on fuel. Donations definitely still needed. The supplies are still needed. People are coming together to bring supplies into hard hit areas of Western North Carolina. They're banding together to to rescue one another. For folks who remember Katrina, there's like the Cajun Navy. Right. I feel very much like this is Cajun Navy. <laughs> yep, this is Redneck Navy. Update us on what you're doing here so that people know where they can help people directly. Yes. So our church is Winkler's Grove Baptist Church, and Sunday our people got a burden to help the people uh, of the hurricane victims. And what we have done, we have turned our campus here into a, a, a collection hub, if you will, to collect items that are needed. Uh, we've been in touch with the folks in the mountains in Asheville and probably 12 different townships in Asheville, also Newland, Pinola, and now we are expanding out into Banner Elk. We've taken tractor trailers, 20-foot trailers. We've had helicopters to land and take uh, loads of things for us up there anything from baby items uh, to needs of first responders, um, swift water rescue people, uh, police, firefighters. These are the people who are on the front lines that are able to get down into the communities, into the hollers, into the hills. We have all kinds of rescue stories. Unfortunately, we have tragic stories, but we have a lot of great victory stories. And as uh, thus far, since Sunday, we've probably done close to a half a million dollars in supplies that have gone up to these people. Uh, we took a bunch of fresh eggs yesterday and milk to one place. They were airlifted out to a whole community that's been cut off for seven days. And these people are gonna get a meal for the first time in seven days. We get a little emotional about it because it's all about helping people. This isn't about politics. It's not about right, left. It's not about anything except helping people. And uh, that's what it's all about. So my wife is the coordinator for the grounds here. Thank you. My name's Kim Deal. I'm the pastor's wife. And uh, we have a list. You can go to Winkler's Grove Baptist Church. We have a push pay. The lists are on our website. And also uh, we do it on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook at Winkler's Grove um, Baptist Church in Hickory, North Carolina. And we got it broken down to the, we have a hot list item every day. Coats, blankets, um, bath towels that we need. Um, we're looking for a tow motor. You can um, call us. Our phone number is 828-324-7267 at the church. Back your name and number and your information. And we're so, so thankful for everyone that's helped us. We even have people that's not even a part of our church that are volunteering here every day. And we're even giving meals to people. We're being breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So thank you so much. We have volunteers inside working together. It's just a community of people. You know, different churches, different volunteers, just people in the community coming together, hand in hand, delivering these items. And um, we will update this list. We, I will be doing a Facebook Live on the church's Facebook page. So if you want okay. to see what's going on inside, if you want to get an idea of how this works, I post a Facebook Live um, usually daily just to show you what we have coming in, what we have going out, and uh, just keep in touch and stay tuned.